to, to start out to orient ourselves, can you just tell us a little bit about your, your life, your background, and your connection to the county? Um, I'm a long born and raised here in Delta County. Um, I've never ventured very far. I've stayed here in Delta County. Um, I do sit on uh, some boards, uh, Community Actions Governing Board. I've been on for about 15 years. Legal Services of Northern Michigan, um, I sit on that board and that one's been about eight to 10 years. So roughly 25 plus years of board, board service that I have done. Um, you go to the Head Start and Great Starts, I've sat on the, their, board, their boards. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a bit of passion of me, of mine to get on to the, to get on to do something. Which, uh, which of those have you felt the strongest uh, connection towards? I would have to say the Community Action Governing Board and then that also in, in connects with the Head Start because the Head Start is under the Community Action Board. So those two boards for the fact that Head Start is for children from birth to five years old. Um, and then you have on the other side, the HRA side is Human Resources Authority. They have also senior services that will be able to help the seniors. Uh, their food dis you know, dis distribution, uh, meals on wheels, um, in-home care, um, all, you know, they have a whole range of things for seniors. And for County Commissioner, what do you see, uh, how, how in, in your own words, how would you describe the role of County Commissioner? What aspects of the job uh, do you think are most important? To me, the very most important thing for County Commissioner is to listen, to go to their township meetings, um, listen to the people of their district, attend the meetings, attend functions that are happening. Um, Ford River Volunteer Fire Department just had a, a fundraiser breakfast out at the Highland Golf Club uh, course, and it, I, I attended it, and it was very nice. Um, I, you just gotta do things for your district. It's for all of Delta County, but you are put into that seat uh, by the people of that district and only that district, you know, those districts. Um, so I would say just really listen to your people. And you, you obviously have a, a deep connection to the county. If somebody was moving here from or considering moving here from out of town and asked you, what, what's the area like? What are Delta County's, you know, positives and negatives? Um, positives now it? is the parks are very nice. Um, the conservation district did a very nice job when it, they were, it was in their hands. They've done tremendous uh, with the parks. Uh, the people here in Escanaba, uh, majority of them are friendly. They'll help you out. We help our community. Drawbacks, I try not to look at those. I'm more of a positive person, um, looking on the positive side all the time instead of the negative side. But of course, being in a small town, small city, you're gonna have different things, crime, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you're gonna have it all over wherever you go. Yeah, and unfortunately, looking maybe a little closer at the negatives. How are no, we looking? Just down? looking. Okay. Yeah, maybe taking a, a look at the negatives. Is there anything that you would like to see different about Delta County? And if so, what would those be? I guess the big thing would be, would be the people in office to really listen to the people. They're the ones that live in the towns, the, the townships, the city, to really take what they say and, and take it and do something with it, whether it's positive or negative about what they're saying. Um, but to really listen, I feel that a lot of people in Delta County do not get heard, or they don't maybe not say anything because they know they're not gonna be heard. Um, 
if, if elected, what would be your biggest priorities? Do you sit, what, what do you think would be your largest challenges in accomplishing those goals? Um, my challenges would be because I'm new. I've, I mean, I'm, I've, this is my first time throwing my name in to run. Um, so some challenges of, of being a, a newbie. <laughs> um, what I would like to see as people coming back together with a lot of things that happen, especially in Escanaba Township, the Flat Rock area. Um, what happened there? Well, that would be the solar that Mr. Barron was trying to get through. Um, just to just to help everything mend. There's there's um, hard hard feelings with the whole deal. Um, I do know that with the Michigan government governor, she put a law in about solar. Um, however, I'm I'm not really opposed, but I'm not for it. I do have to do a little bit more more homework on that. Um, but I have talked to some people up in Escanaba Township and Flat Rock area, and they did, they told me why everybody was so opposed of it up there. Um, it had to do with their aquifer, um, not enough soil, not enough dirt to cover, you know, to really cover it. And um, with all the drilling of the 465,000 holes into the ground, um, it would have very possibly contaminated their, their drinking water up there. So when the governor come in with this law, I feel that it should go to the voters. The voters are the ones that live in those districts, or live in those townships, excuse me, lives in those, those townships. They're the one that day to day and know what their township is like, because they live there. And I think that the, it should go to the voice of the people. and instead of a law right now, it should be on the ballot to be voted on by the people. Yeah, and any any other priorities, any other challenges? Oh, you, there's always a um, couple of them are being rule talked about. One is the airport. Um, I have attended the meeting for the airport and I know Mr. Ron Stadler has a lot on his plate. He is going to be very busy for a long time, getting things prioritized and uh, what they're going to do. I, I know one big thing that they had brought up there at the meeting was a, a fuel truck. Do they buy one out? Do they lease it? Do they? What exactly is going to happen with the fuel truck? Um, the veterans. The veterans is another one. Um, I do believe that it may be on the November ballot as a um, millage, a one-tenth of a millage. Um, hopefully the voters of Delta County will pass that and so that we can get our VSO up and running more than what he is now. Um, you know, there's going to be the challenges all over the place, you know, and, and I'm just going to hit the, hit the pavement running face them head on, do my homework, do my research that I need to know about what, you know, the certain thing is, and talk to the people. Go to my districts and, or to my uh, townships and Ford River, Bark River, uh, Escanaba Township, part of the city, and talk to them and see what they would like to do. Because they're, my voice, my opinion, my personal beliefs do not play into this. It is what, District 3 wants, the people of District 3. Oh, and then Delta County, I mean the whole thing, but my, my district is the important. Right, yeah. Going back to the reason why the, the recall was filed, the, the stated reason was the, the firing of Emily DeSalvo back on a commission meeting in February uh, by Moyle, Barron, and, and, and Peterson. Uh, th this was after DeSalvo had, had given a, a fairly lengthy speech accusing them of, oh, a acting in their own best interests over the counties, of, you know, some unethical behavior. Uh, what is your reaction to her allegations? What weight do you give them? Uh, and how, how did that compel or influence your run uh, in, the, in the recall election? 
I do not know Emily DeSalvo personally, um, but I believe from what I have seen after really paying more close attention um, that her allegations are spot on. Um, I cannot fathom a person um, asking for their scores from being for their job performance getting low job performance scores, asking why, and not getting told. Um, I believe they are, again, spot on. Um, and it, it's sad that they had to do it the way they did it. Um, that first is what got me interested, but I did not know where to do, where to go, what, you know, so I've mentioned it to some people and talked about it and said, oh, you know, if this recall goes through, I, I've always wanted to run for county commissioner or, or a board, you know. Um, and it just got to the right people. And next thing I know, I get a phone call. I'm, Are you serious about running? And I said, yes, I am. This is my time. This is my time to get going, to get my feet wet. If, if, if you recall, which of her allegations of unethical behavior um, were most compelling to you and that you saw maybe the most ev evidence for? I, truthfully, it was the whole thing. It was the whole gamut. It really wasn't just one thing over another. It was the, the whole thing because to have that to be happening at local level with local officials is just wrong. So it really wasn't just one thing over another, it was the whole the whole gamut, the whole letter, the 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 scores, the 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 money. Um, you know, she asked a question about some money that was being paid out and they got mad because she questioned it. You know, um, that's things that you're supposed to do. You are supposed to be held hold them accountable of things and she they were her boss the county commission only has one one employee and that is the admin administrative assistant or administrator excuse me administrator um so her her to ask them where this was going or to ask what about her scores that was all perfectly right to do and the community obviously seems divided the commission meetings are getting heated you know almost every meeting um, do you think that if you're elected you'd be able to maybe heal that divide and, I am, and do you think that that's partially your responsibility I'm hoping to and it may not be my res my responsibility it be the com all of the commissioners responsibility but I'm hoping to heal a lot of wounds that are opened in this county and Delta County, the whole, the whole thing. Um, there's so much divide, like you said. Um, I, I'm hoping to because it's just what needs to be done. And, oh, yes. Uh, anything else or rather, what, what is your pitch to voters, what would you say is the most important message you would want to communicate, communicate to people in your district? In my district, that I am their voice, that it is not about me, not about my beliefs, not about my personal opinion. It is the people of District 3's voice, opinions that matter. Anything else you want to touch on before we? Um, yes, in April 28th newspa newspaper, um, this weekend's newspaper, there was an article written that misinformed people saying that I was not on the November ballot. However, I am on the November ballot. I had turned in my paperwork to run on the November ballot on 415 to the Delta County clerks. Um, for some reason, the 
person that did the writing of it did not get all of the information or just assumed that because I will not be on the August primary election ballot because I am a nonpartisan candidate. Um, that's only for your Republicans and your Democrats if there's two people running. So I will not be on the August primary, but I will be on the November ballot. I do want to continue to do this, to do the to do the work of county commissioner, and so I will be running on the November ballot. Understood. We'll get the word out. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Myra.